All right, good afternoon, everybody. Ryan Leary here with Recruiting Daily. We're gonna give it another moment or so. Uh, we've got people joining in, so we wanna make sure everybody is properly connected uh, for the session today. All right, I think we are on good ground and ready to go. Uh, so good afternoon, everybody. Welcome out uh, to a beautiful Tuesday uh, webinar, the biggest gaps in your candidate experience and how to fix them. This is going to be a really good session today that we're partnering with my ally on. We'll get to that in just a, a quick moment. Uh, but so that everybody is on the same page today, here is the agenda. Uh, first things first, you will be on mute. Uh, so we will not be able to hear you. You will only hear us. We are going to share a recording. That's one of the biggest questions we always get. There will be a lot of information, a lot of good conversation. We are going to record the session. You will get the session recording as well as all of the notes to the recording and the, uh, and the slide deck here. Uh, we'll deliver that uh, probably a couple of hours or so after uh, the webinar. We'll send that directly to your inbox. Okay, so be on a uh, lookout for that. Uh, we may have a couple of polls pop up. I'm not quite sure. If we do, fantastic. Uh, if they come up, answer them. That's going to help guide the conversation today. And of course, ask questions. And the way you're going to ask questions is on your uh, right-hand side of your screen, you're going to see a panel that says questions or Q&A. Open that up, drop a question in. We will answer the question. Uh, we're going to try to answer them as we go along today. Uh, but if it's not super relevant uh, or we're kind of tight on time, we'll hold that until the end. Uh, but we will get to the questions for sure. Uh, and if, if you're on social, you want to show some love, share it using the hashtag RDaily. Okay. All right. So let's go ahead and kick off. Our webinar today is supported by uh, the team at My Ally and actually Deep T, who is the founder of my ally is going to be presenting the webinar uh, and you can see a, a great photo of her there <clears throat> you're gonna love her she's a fantastic speaker and has a lot of great information to to share if you haven't yet checked out my ally when you get your email uh, with the recording we're gonna send the link so you can go check them out don't check them out right this moment stay on the webinar uh, but we will get you a link it's a really great tool guys so I want you to check it out uh, if it's not for you that's okay uh, but they have a lot of great information on their site, great resources. They have a great blog with some really good contact or uh, content. Uh, but essentially, My Ally helps you to fully automate your entire interviewing process and all of the recruitment coordination. So all of those annoying back and forth communications you have that go left untouched and drag out the recruiting process, that's where they're going to step in and going to help you uh, alleviate that pain. Uh, so with that said, Deep T, welcome into the call. Will we have you on here? Thank you so much, Ryan. It's such a pleasure to be here. And uh, we, as a company, care very, very deeply about candidate experience, mainly because all our clients do. Um, so I'm super excited to talk about uh, candidate experience and what it takes to create a process uh, and take initiatives that uh, give the best possible candidate experience and help uh, each and every company uh, stand out amongst uh, competition. So, yeah, sure. uh, great. Yep. So, so guys, we're going to get started here. Uh, DP is going to go through and present, ask your questions, drop some questions in, let us know if you have anything you want to answer. Uh, but DP, I'm going to pass this off to you and let and let you uh, and let you get going here. Thank you, Ryan. I'm super excited to do it. Great. So, um, to begin with, uh, candidate experience has three big pillars associated to providing the best possible uh, experience for any potential candidate. Number one is speed, number two is communication, and number three is transparency. So essentially, three components towards building this great relationship that would take this candidate from just being you know, another uh, candidate for you to a long-lasting relationship. So with respect to speed, um, delays in the hiring process can't always be averted. But when they're unnecessary, uh, they subtract from the experience recruiters can create for candidates. Being quick to reply to candidates, uh, initiate next steps, and even make offers rejections 
sends out the message that you value candidates and their time. So every candidate feels respected. The process is speedy. And uh, yeah, more uh, the candidates can clearly move on with their lives if they're rejected or uh, you know can be offered a position and can really look forward to a really good journey with your company. Communication would essentially mean um, a clear channel of communication throughout the entire process on a day-to-day, -day, um, if not an hourly basis. 65% of job seekers say they never or rarely receive notices from recruiters. Whatever channels of communication you choose to leverage or for hiring, it's imperative that you do all you can to keep them open and accessible. This includes keeping conversations alive, informing candidates about next steps, and being responsive to their questions and concerns. Success here helps candidates combat interview nerves, allowing them to showcase the best of themselves. So be it um, an email or multi-channel communications uh, where you also call the candidate, keep them posted, um, is super important to ensure uh, that they know what's happening in the process um, and know what to expect. And I can give you examples of so many of my friends here in the Bay Area who've applied to many roles. And yeah, about um, uh, you know, majority of them say that uh, they rarely hear back or they have no idea how long the process is going to take. So that brings us to the third pillar, which is transparency. Being honest and forthright with candidates can pay considerable dividends. Recruiters who hide information or don't answer questions about compensation and role uh, details will find that candidates are three times more likely to remove themselves from consideration. Transparency creates a personal connection, develops trust, and assures candidates that they will be treated with the same degree of respect if they were to join your organization. So it lays a pretty good foundation for this relationship, uh, whether they are an employee, whether they become an employee after the recruiting process, or when you reach out to them probably a year or two from now. Next slide. And to kick this off, um, uh, what we will talk about is um, you know, some tips uh, that you can begin with. It's not rocket science. It's very, very simple. Uh, I'm sure majority of you follow uh, uh, some amount of these practices. But yeah, here is a comprehensive view of all the practices that we could follow in order to create the best possible candidate experience. So to begin with, success begins at home. And uh, what that means is basically recruiters often put their relationship with the candidate above all others. But unless you're on the same page uh, with your hiring manager, candidates are likelier to endure a poor experience, whether that's being ignored completely or receiving mixed signals. At best, this may result in them ghosting you or withdrawing their application. At worst, they may stay away from your product or services in the future or even share their negative experience with other potential customers and candidates. When using job boards or social media instead of referral networks, candidates rely on job descriptions to determine whether or not they want to apply for a given role. So um, vague or generic JD signal that the role may cross the line from fluid to undefined, while highly specific ones come across as overly demanding and out of touch with professional realities. Both are red flags for candidates. So to begin with, um, you know, laying the infrastructure at home with respect to a clear, transparent relationships with hiring managers on their requirements, as well as communicating that uh, accurately with job descriptions is key. Next slide, please. So um, yeah, uh, the next big practice uh, that you can um, you know, or the next big uh, loophole that you can avoid is steering clear of the resume black hole. 92% of job seekers report having had their resumes or applications ignored by a company at least once in their career. Don't contribute to that. Uh, it's important to let candidates know that their application has been received, even if it's an automated response. This improves employer branding and puts your company forward as the kind that treats each and every application with courtesy. And this is definitely low-hanging fruit uh, and very easy to do. Um, and once you shortlist the candidates you do want to speak to, reach out quickly. The longer you wait, the likelier they are to move forward with other opportunities and possibly accept other offers. And in this day and age where uh, candidates have significant power, the last thing you want to do is drive them to your competitors. A couple of days 
delay might not seem like a lot but it could be the difference between catching a candidate before they say yes to another offer and one of the key advantages with my lies ai powered recruiting assistant is it's available around the clock so any kind of automated messaging uh, is very quick and easy to configure and uh, yeah this avoids uh, the problem of uh, losing candidates to lack of response or uh, dropping things through the cracks and helps recruiters move conversations along more quickly keeping them in your pipeline next slide um this one is very very important personalizing outreach in this day and age where there's so many um, tools that uh, automate messaging uh, outreach to candidates um, there's so many campaign tools as well uh, it's it's hard to do but um, at the same time very very important you want to speak to candidates who have achieved goals relevant to your hiring needs make their making their success uh, an integral part of the conversation if you are hiring for a leadership position and a candidate has helped grow a team in the previous role mention it if you are in search of a creative or innovative engineer talk about specific projects they've done or problems they've solved this makes the outreach feel much more authentic and instantly creates a positive connection between the recruiter and candidate i cannot emphasize how many times i've heard engineers mention this because engineers as well as other tech talent receive so many messages on linkedin and um, they uh, the last thing they would do is respond to boilerplate messages um, what would really strike chord is um, a project that you have that could be relevant to them that they've done in the past and uh, that ensures that the response rate is much much higher so connecting part of their career history to the role you're hiring for especially for senior leadership positions but also you know any other role that requires special qualifications next slide please set realistic expectations yeah, we have a couple of questions that came in uh re regarding this slide here around personalizing outreach um what are, and if you're going to go over this in a bit I, I don't know but i'll ask them here they're they're looking the the questions essentially are looking to see which ways you recommend personalizing that outreach is it through email is it through text messaging and what are some of the what are some of the things you're doing to personalize within those uh, ways that you're communicating definitely thanks ryan that's a great question um as much as the channel or medium is important whether it's email or text or linkedin or any other channel uh, the messaging is basically um, one of the most important things that strikes uh, uh, candidates in this day and age um with respect to uh, you know whether it's email or text or linkedin um i would say look at your response rates based on uh, historical campaigns and use the one that's most effective um of course um millennials as well as uh, you know uh, uh, younger uh, people in the workforce uh, prefer to receive text messages chat messages but um, yeah email is definitely not outdated yet uh, and linkedin as well uh and also this depends on the roles that you're looking for different functions um do well on different channels um but most more importantly it's the content um as candidates we receive uh, so many messages from so many companies so many recruiters on a day to day basis it's really really important to st uh, strike a connection and stand out one of the best ways to do that is find things in common uh, common to their experience common to you know probably the school that they went to uh, and you know making connection to someone you know there or um relate your own personal experience um with respect to engineering or uh, you know other specific roles related to technology um we would highly recommend reviewing their profiles reviewing you know other sites such as uh, get or stack overflow to understand what they've done in order to use that information in order to outreach i know that it takes an extra, a, you know a little bit more time but the conversions will be much higher and you would also start off with uh, you know on a better foot uh, with each and every relationship ryan you mentioned that uh, there's another question i hope i answered this one yeah i, th I think so no i i combined there's a couple i combined them uh, together great great uh, thank you ryan um 
are there any more questions or would you like me to move on? No, let, let's keep going on. I think the others will probably going to wind up getting to uh, pretty soon. Great, great, thank you. So moving on to the next slide um, about setting realistic expectations. Um, most recruiters don't want to talk about money or share job details during the early parts of a conversation. Sometimes it's even company policy not to share this information. However, the further you proceed with an interview without establishing these basic expectations, candidates become likelier to pull out of contention. These are details that are highly, le highly relevant to their decision and can be established right at the beginning of your interaction. So when they do remove themselves from consideration or over a lack of willingness to share this crucial information, they're going to do so with resentment, not just disappointment. Since 72% of candidates will share their bad experiences on Glassdoor, social media, or other job-related channels, it's important to minimize the risk of this scenario playing out. Um, and this also applies to setting expectations on just the interview process, how long it's going to take, um, what does it entail, uh, how many people are going to speak to them, um, logistics, and other realities to begin to avoid wasting the candidate's time. So let's say there is something within your process that doesn't fit within the candidate's timeline. Uh, I think it's respectful to share it with them, and they would appreciate that as well. Next slide, please. Uh, of course, ca uh, candidate comfort is paramount to candidate experience. Um, we as humans, uh, you know, are selfish. We think about ourselves. There's nothing wrong in that. And of course, candidates think about themselves as well and their comfort. Putting candidates at ease helps them find their sweet spot, enabling them to answer questions or perform tasks with complete focus and clarity. And um, to give you a personal example, uh, if I were a candidate, I'd like to focus on just the interview and make sure that any other distraction is as minimal as possible. So uh, it also strengthens a candidate's connection with you and your company, makes them feel valued and respected. And it increases the chances that they'll recommend your company to other high-performing candidates in their professional network. So simple things like um, making sure the flight and hotel are comfortable, uh, you know, if there is an all-day interview, making lunch arrangements, ensuring that the candidates have enough breaks between the process, uh, making sure that you don't switch conference rooms on them when they are, uh, you know, uh, on site for an all-day uh, interview. Uh, these are simple things, but definitely uh, create a, a really big impact. For candidates traveling from other regions or locations, a degree of concern for their arrangements and comfort shows that you genuinely care about them. They will be far more likely to go an extra mile, both during the interview as well as further on in the hiring process. And um, uh, MyLi has a few features optimized for uh, the best possible candidate interview experience as well. For example, making sure conference rooms are booked accordingly so that there's minimal switches, um, as well as you know uh, coordinating with the right resources in order to make sure that everything is aligned with the flight and hotel and so on. Having said all that, um, um, let's move on to the next slide, Brian. Yeah, well, actually, we, we do have some questions coming in that could that could be uh, useful here. Uh, one of them is, how do you how do you handle candidates that do not want to share their salary expectations after we've shared uh, the similar details? Definitely, um, I think. Uh, uh, the first and foremost thing is we have to respect their privacy. Um, if uh, they don't want to share, uh, I think uh, it's it would be inappropriate to push them or ask them for those. Um, I, there are other indicators and signals um, as well. Uh, uh, so typically when we see clients work with candidates who are reluctant to share information, it's very important to ask them pointed questions such as what is most important to them. You want to understand what is important to them in order to focus on that when, let's say, all the interview process goes well. Uh, you can uh, use that information to give the best possible package to the candidate. And also, if it is uh, you know, not the hard aspects of it in terms of dollars or uh, other benefits, uh, soft aspects such as for a candidate, what would be most important, let's say, is um, working on critical projects. So these are things, these are, uh, this is information that you can use during the interview process to increase conversion. 
So um, I've, we've been able to get around that question by figuring out and asking the candidate what is most important to them. And maybe even going so far as, uh, let's say there was another role very, very similar, uh, all else being equal, what would make a difference to you? Uh, what would you know make you decide um, in favor of one versus the other? So these kind of questions really um, put the candidate on the spot and um, will help you get the right information in order to convert the candidate better. Ryan, did I answer your question? I think so, yes. Great. Any other questions before we move on? Uh, let's see. We've got... Um... Yeah, I think there's a handful, but let's hold them off until we get a little further in. I think we're going to be good for now. Great. Thank you. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. Great. Um, so having said all that, having, you know, prepared travel, uh, you know, personalizing outreach, setting expectations, um, at the end of the day, life happens. Uh, even the most perfect arrangements can go haywire at the last minute for any number of reasons, including accidents or illnesses. Delays at the airport are also a common reason for last minute reschedules, especially when, a, when candidates are traveling from other regions. It's important for recruiters to be mindful of the fact that these things happen and are beyond candidate control and to give them the benefit of the doubt in such situations. Um, so giving every meeting enough leeway to accommodate for reschedules due to last minute emergencies is important. And here uh, is one other place where MyLi uh, steps in seamlessly. Uh, and reschedules, uh, rescheduling interviews uh, is uh, very, very easily done with MyLi. By syncing with interviewer calendars and conversing with candidates to find a suitable new date and time, our solution allows recruiting professionals to focus on speaking to candidates with understanding and empathy in difficult situations. Next slide, please. So as much as life happens, we should also stick to the plan when possible, because many candidates have uh, full-time jobs already and lives, and we need to be mindful of this and respect their time. So anything from our side, we need to ensure that we stick to plan. Um, no company wants their employees neglecting their duties to attend interviews and assessments with potential new employers. Asking or expecting candidates applying to your company to do the same thing to their current employers is both unfair and unwise. Um, and just to give you a few examples, larger companies often set up interviews with candidates before interviewers have a chance to confirm, causing unnecessary rescheduling woes. Uh, we've also seen large companies where um, the interview invite has to be accepted by the interviewer before the confirmation even goes to the candidate. This again, uh, sets up a, a poor candidate experience because the candidate is waiting uh, until the interviewer accepts uh, the invite. So these these kind of behaviors are things that you can easily correct by setting expectations, change management within the company. And to go to the other side of the spectrum, smaller companies and startups are often juggling multiple projects and can lose track of time or appointments. So it's very important to uh, make the process systematic um, and stick with a system that can help you automate a lot of these so that uh, candidates are not inconvenienced. And um, when they show up for an interview, uh, they can be fully focused on performing well in that interview. So whatever the scale of your company, it's important to consistently value candidates' time and other commitments. Next slide, please. This one is super important and a place where uh, recruiters can play such an important role uh, in helping prepare the candidates and also uh, you know, build a really strong relationship with them. So uh, give every candidate for a given role the same outline, brief interview structure and information. Sharing different information with different candidates during the hiring process speaks to recruiter bias, subconscious or otherwise. Be uniform in your briefing and processes to the extent possible. Ensure that you don't favor a specific demographic group of people or individuals. As a recruiter, it's vital that you remain objective. One way of achieving objectivity and fairness is to create a document with all the information candidates will need and then sharing that and only that as standard procedure. 
which can easily be done with my life's candidate communication platform um creating templates with this information for requisitions is an easy way to not only automate but also ensure that any kind of bias is reduced um since 80% of candidates would take a job based on positive connection with a recruiter or interviewer it's important to avoid instances where some candidates get an unfair leg up examples of this include sharing differing or inconsistent information on interviewer personalities or preferences um for example it's very easy to share an off uh, offline comment about this interviewer loves to travel or read or code for fun um also uh, inconsistent information on interview or assessment process and you'll be asked such as you'll be asked to do an assignment but you can ask for more time so keeping the process consistent sharing information that would make them successful consistently uh, with all candidates is uh, very very important and um, uh, it's also easy to stick with the process and uh, let it run so that uh, uh, you can arm all the candidates equally and avoid any future uh, uh, you know problems with this issue next slide please sure so dp we have a question that came in here and i'm also going to launch a quick poll uh, as as we're answering this question uh, so guys everyone on the call i'm going to launch a poll real quick go ahead and take a moment and answer the poll uh, do you think recruiter bias influences candidate experience yes or no so go ahead and answer that and dp as they're doing that i'm going to ask you a question here that came in what questions must candidates ask and or not ask of a hiring manager definitely um um questions that candidates can ask hiring managers um oh this could be a wide variety of uh, questions of course i think the most important ones would be um you know culture related questions um you know um role related questions team related questions um that are super important to them and um I'm sorry, Ryan. Uh, I saw the screen switch there, so uh, I oh, lost. Gotcha. Yeah, uh, no, I, I was wondering. So, so, so what I've done is the 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 poll has ended, and and that's that that was that switch there, DP. So <clears throat> it looks like we have a a pretty a pretty significant uh, lean on the audience here. Ninety three percent of the audience believes that recruiter bias influences ca candidate experience. I'll say I'm in that camp as well. What are your thoughts on that? And what are your thoughts on the results? That typical to what you see in the market today? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we see, we see this all the time. So I'm with you uh, in that camp as well. All right. Let's see if we get. Uh, we should be on that next slide now. Great. Uh, so going back to your previous question, uh, Ryan, with respect to what que questions to. ask a hiring manager versus not i think um uh, you know focusing on values and asking questions around those um, is super important questions that you can avoid are you know how did i do um compensation questions um before time and uh, you know anything that a recruiter could possibly handle in terms of next steps and so on so these are questions that you can always ask the rec uh, recruiter but again uh you know um there's no right or wrong i think as long as uh, you know you care about a question and you want to focus on values and what's important to you i think it's important to get that information from the hiring manager or the recruiter so let's go to the next slide uh, which is the surprises um i think it's the previous one yeah great um so this summarizes it uh, summarizes it really really well uh, you know surprises are for parties and not uh, interviews so um yeah do definitely do not keep the candidate uh, you know in the dark about protocol compliances or any process for everything from security checks to signing ndas ahead of on site visits it's important that candidates walk to their interviews knowing what they'll need to do communicate even the most basic reminders like remembering to carry certain documentation in advance creating a standard email template in myli with everything a candidate needs to know and uh, expect um um will help reduce the chances of recruiters inadvertently missing out on key information 
that could lead to an unwanted surprise. So right from checking uh, the system that you use to check in, the instructions that you uh, that the candidate needs to follow in order to check in and wait, uh, these are very, very important. Letting them know who's going to receive them, who's going to take them to the conference room, or uh, letting them know how to join a Blue Jeans link or a Zoom conference or a WebEx link. These are uh, very important. You don't want them delayed at the last minute and frazzled uh, with difficulties in joining a conference call or so on. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, it's very important to uh, give the candidate uh, a, a flavor of the work environment while you are evaluating them as well. Uh, do not create a pop quiz culture. Replicate the conditions uh, the candidates will get to work in uh, to see them how they perform, to see them at their best and how they fit in with your company. Um, in school, we couldn't use calculators during math tests. This is not an accurate reflection of the real world, though, where professionals have access to the tools they need at all times. If you want to see, a see what a candidate can really do as part of your team, give them the opportunity to showcase their skills in the same kind of environment they'll be working in. Denying them access to certain tools or knowledge isn't going to provide a fair picture of how they'll actually perform or fit in. Uh, and in real real world examples, uh, you know, if you give them a case study, uh, it's important to give them all the tools they need for the case study, whether it's in the form of answers or access to information and material that would help them thrive and arrive at an answer, as opposed to uh, getting frustrated or uh, form a wrong impression or incorrect impression about the company and the team that they would work with. Next slide, please. And of course, please uh, remember happy interviewers make happy candidates. Um, you definitely uh, pass on some of your vibe uh, to the candidates during the interview process. So, uh, you know, you don't want to be distracted or, uh, you know, have having a bad day at work and taking an interview and letting it reflect makes a huge impact on candidates. Candidates can sense when you're distracted, when they are, uh, when they get the impression that they're not the most important person in the room. And it, uh, one way to make sure that uh, interviewers are always uh, at their best when they conduct interviews is to keep an eye on load balance. Uh, an interviewer with burnout is le less likely to deliver a great candidate experience. Stressed, overworked, tired, sick, or unfocused interviewers will not be able to fairly assess the candidates they meet. This can cause you to miss out on great talent, but it can also result in candidates withdrawing their applications or accepting other offers due to feeling undervalued or un unappreciated. Um, MyLI actually has a dashboard that allows you to customize interviewer load preferences, giving people a break when uh, they need it and making sure no one is rushing through uh, interviews or conducting them while exhausted or preoccupied. And as interviewers as well, uh, without load balance, you don't want an interviewer's primary role to be uh, you know, spending 40, 50% of their time in interviews. Load balancing makes sure that um, any interviewer spends about a reasonable 10 to 20% of their time maximum in order to conduct their uh, interviews and focus on their key roles. Next slide, please. Yeah, DT, let me, let me ask you a question here. We're getting some questions here around the last couple of slides. Um, let's we'll, we'll, we'll stay with this one here with the happy interviewer slide. Do you think interviews should be technology lists in no phones or laptops, just human engagement? I think uh, it depends on the role, uh, Ryan. Um, and, uh, you know, there are different kinds of uh, roles where you would need access to information. So, you know, technical interviews, for example, uh, are very tough to conduct without technology. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, other cultural rounds and uh, similar interviews do not need any technology. So it completely depends on the role um, and denying access to knowledge and information uh, for technical roles is probably uh, not optimal. And um, yeah, at the same time, uh, you know, uh, avoiding pop quiz mentality uh, is super important. So setting up the right process where the candidate can thrive uh, is very important while you design the interview process. So designing the interview process um, itself is a really thoughtful exercise that recruiters and hiring managers together need to come up with. Okay. 
And uh, just to add to that, it could be something as formal as a panel interview or a presentation, and it could be something informal over lunch or coffee. So having a bit of a nice balance through the process is important so that you're giving uh, you know, a, a, a personal experience to the candidate. At the same time, uh, you get what you need to by thoroughly evaluating them um, you know, over a more formal process. And again, um, it's very important to remember that the candidate uh, is, is a human as well. And uh, we've seen companies conduct interviews which are all day long, eight, nine hours, or last over multiple days. Uh, please keep in mind that yeah, anything as elaborate as that, um, there'll be many candidates, especially great candidates, who figure out they don't need to go through that process. And probably uh, you know, a great reference at another company might get them that role. So it's, it's important to be mindful of how your process looks like and whether it's balanced enough that candidates are interested and can you know stick around through the entire process. Got it. And I, I've gone to the next slide for that. Not sure if you're saying that. Perfect. Thank you, Ryan. Um, yeah, and uh, yeah, my answer actually is a good segue to this slide. Um, yeah, don't assign overly time-consuming tasks. So uh, please remember that most candidates have many candidates have full-time jobs and lives. Uh, asking them to perform complex assignments that take really, really long is unfair in advice. Giving them uh, uh, timelines as well that are impossible. For example, most candidates can get these projects done over the weekend. So giving them uh, enough notice and time in order to process those projects is super important. Uh, depending on the industry, asking a candidate with an extensive track record or portfolio to audition for your company by completing an assignment can range from unfair to unprofessional. It's likely to have a negative impact on their perception of you as an employer. And for many professionals, especially at a higher level, this is billable time. Limit any tasks or assignments to those designed to determine their way of working and that of your company are in sync. And be sure to pay for their time. Next slide, please. Yeah, culture fit is a two-way street. Uh, candidates are looking for uh, a workplace that fits them. And uh, the same goes for you. And hence, it's very important to introduce them to their potential peers and teammates. And um, um, yeah, show me a company trying to find an employee who's a good fit. And I'll show you a professional trying to find the best place to work. Uh, as recruiters, part of your role is to help candidates assess whether your workplace is right for them. Show them around, introduce them to colleagues they'll interact with, and give them a taste of the professional culture. They'll be more, they'll be happier and more comfortable with making their decision, and you'll be less likely to push through a poor fit or wrong hire. So many of these potential peers and teammates you could actually use uh, to sell the role to the candidate. Because uh, if they provide a good experience to the candidate, yeah, um, you know, half your job is done when you find a good candidate. Next slide, please. Um, always initiate the next steps uh, conversation yourself, letting your candidates know what to expect following an interview or an assessment. Um, don't let interviews disappear into the recruiting black hole when they end. Keep the conversation alive and let candidates know what to expect next. Be sure to keep this consistent and share the same information with every candidate. If you set a timeline of one week to follow up and realize that that window needs to be extended, be sure to let them know that their application is still being considered despite the delay. And see, uh, explain the delay to the best that you can so that you come across as being fully transparent. Even if you have no updates, let them know. Um, even better, give them a call. Uh, it's always, um, you know, candidates love receiving calls from recruiters. Uh, and they are more likely to bear with your challenges if you're transparent with them. I can give you a perfect example of a recent uh, encounter that I've had with a candidate uh, that um, mentioned how uh, one of the companies in the Silicon Valley interacted with him, and that really, really impressed him. So he ended up responding at 11 PM in the night to the recruiter and uh, got a response back, bam, within five minutes. Um, you know, talking about why there isn't an update yet and uh, when they would be able to provide an update, which, which is in the next 24 hours. 
So, um, uh, you know, clearly uh, this company is on top of its game. And by the end of the week, they actually close the candidate. So these are, you know, simple interactions, but uh, for extremely valuable candidates, this matters a lot. So uh, always initiate the next steps, let them know, be fully transparent. Uh, if there are any hiccups in the process, let them know as well, because you will take these candidates, uh, you know, with you for life uh, and build those relationships no matter where you are. And, you know, within the same company, um, let's say next year you outreach to the same candidate again uh, in case they've rejected or you've rejected them. Uh, it's important that they remember how their experience was with you so that your conversion for the next time around is better. Next slide, so, please. Yeah, yeah. so, so, so Deep, we have a, a couple of questions coming in, but uh, one was from the last slide and, and one, one was from this slide. So we'll start with this, with this uh, topic that you're talking about here. What, what do you recommend, and, and I know you don't live this day to day, but what do you recommend or what do you see from your clients as far as recommending what next steps in the interview process should be uh, for, for the recruiters once they've had the interview with the, with the candidate? Definitely. Um, so uh, the, the key thing over here is to be fully transparent about uh, the next uh, few steps. Please remember that as much as you look at the stages in your ADS, the candidate uh, cannot access your ADS, doesn't know what the next steps are. Uh, they don't know how many interviews are in the process. Uh, they don't know uh, who's going to interview them next. Um, yeah, because they don't have access to your ADS. And you're looking at it on a day-to-day -day basis and might uh, you know, take it for granted that the candidate knows as well. So very, very simple steps such as, hey, uh, next few rounds will be XYZ if all goes well, and you will be speaking to XYZ uh, if all goes well. And uh, this process would happen uh, over the next uh, few weeks or days, and uh, I'll be in touch with you. I'll let you know, uh, you know, any updates and keep you posted. Feel free to call me. Uh, so these are simple steps to build that relationship and um, um, you know, making the candidates aware that you're still considering them, keeping communication lines open, um, you know, buys you time to speak to hiring managers and get back to them with details. So simple steps, nothing uh, sophisticated. All you need to remember is when you see the stages in your ADS, the candidate has no clue what's happening. So it's important to give that information to them. Did I answer your question, Ryan? Hello, uh, Brian, you still there? Oh, yep, yeah. apologies, I had myself, I did the mute thing. What I was saying is, yeah, you definitely answered the question, and for everyone that's asking questions, continue to ask those. We're going to get to those. We just have a couple of more slides left, and then we're gonna come back and answer uh, a good amount of these uh, before we get off the call today. So we'll go to the next slide, uh, we'll wrap it up uh, in the next couple of slides, and then we'll, we'll be right back to those questions. Thanks, Ryan. Um, one of the biggest delays in the interview process is candidate evaluation. Um, feedback is like bread. It's always better when it's fresh. Getting interviewers to evaluate your candidates within 24 hours of meeting them is always going to yield a more accurate and complete picture of the candidate's performance. The quicker you are able to get that evaluation, the sooner you can either move to the next phase of your process or rule out an applicant. Candidates will appreciate either being hired or being told that it's not going to work out, as long as you don't let it drag on. Whether it's to let them know you'll get back to them soon, set up another interview, or send a note of regret, this will set you apart. And it makes candidates 350% three, more likely to remain in the pipeline. And as we all know, this is one of the biggest time-consuming tasks within an interview process, which is to get uh, feedback from interviewers. So there are definitely solutions to that. Um, one way is to schedule debriefs uh, so that you can pull all the interviewers into the same room, discuss and move forward with the candidate. This typically happens to, towards the end of a recruit of an interview process, as you all know. Uh, but even during the process, uh, you could use automated tools like MyAli to um, you know, 
follow up constantly with the interviewers to collect this feedback in order to take act, uh, take a decision on a candidate and move them along. Next slide, please. Always be quick to say no. Uh, it's not an easy conversation. It is a tough conversation, especially when you have built a relationship with a candidate. But there's nothing more that a candidate would respect than clear, transparent communication on you know, uh, why uh, it is a no and uh, get some feedback out of it and quickly move on with their lives. Um, candidate experience isn't about making everyone happy. It's about treating every candidate fairly respecting their time, valuing them as professionals and people. An average requisition receives over 125 applications, but you can only interview a handful of those candidates and hire only one. At some point, you'll have to say no and say it several times. When it's time to have those conversations, um, do it tactfully and quickly. Um, candidates who don't make the grade will appreciate the chance to move on with other opportunities and offers. Next slide, please. Yeah, candidate experience goes beyond the offer. Um, help new hires feel settled quickly, um, especially when they have to relocate. Um, so yeah, let's say you've interviewed several candidates, made an offer to the best fit, and they've accepted. Um, since you own the hire, it's only fair that you follow up uh, with the same level of care and honesty that you uh, that you followed up with during the interview process. Leaving them to fend for themselves during their initial days is a guaranteed way to foster feelings of isolation. So uh, do reach out every now and then to ensure that they've settled down, that they're, uh, you know, they have access to everything they feel empowered in order to make an impact with your company. Help candidates um, um, turned higher settle in by guiding them through their initial days and weeks at their new company. Next slide, please. Yeah, uh, finally, to end this, um, nurture post-rejection relationships. As you all know, our potential candidate pool is uh, you know, candidates from your past, present, and definitely the future. So you never know when someone might be an ideal fit for another role in the future. There are companies in the Bay Area that have, uh, and uh, as well as the rest of the country, that have clear automation around this, where if a candidate is rejected exactly after 12 months, uh, you know, you um, are you receive outreach emails and uh, the company tries to see if you are a good fit and can uh, hire you for an open role at that point of time. So you can't hire everyone. It's an unfortunate reality of recruiting with candidates who don't get an offer. It can prove highly valuable to show empathy, stay in touch and take a genuine interest in their careers. Who knows? You know, a year from now, they might actually equip themselves with all the skills that you need for your role. Um, and they could be a great fit for a future role. At worst, they'll send the high performers in their network your way as referrals and recommendations. Either way, you win. So it's super important to nurture these relationships and build your candidate database in order to tap into that and uh, definitely help with your sourcing ch challenges. So with that, um, I... Um, have come to the end of uh, my slides, uh, Ryan. Uh, any questions that you have for me? We do have questions, so let's go ahead and and jump right into them. And uh, we've got a few minutes left, guys. We're coming up to that hour, uh, so we're going to handle uh, a handful of questions. I ask a handful of, handful of questions, and we'll get all those answers out as well. Uh, so for everyone on the call, you will receive the recording, the updates, and the slide deck as well. Okay, so first question with regards to surprises and candidate feedback, how does my ally avoid compliance and legal issues? Definitely. So, uh, with respect to candidate feedback, um, uh, just to uh, be fully transparent here, my ally uh, typically doesn't deal with uh, or come across candidate feedback, or you you would not be providing candidate feedback through. My life. Um, we recommend that typically this be a conversation, one on one conversation that you have with the candidate that you've built a relationship with. This goes a long, long way uh, into the future. And of course, you have to share information that you are allowed to and not share information that you're not allowed to. So, um, based on this, have a clear cut, transparent uh, conversation with the candidate. Let them know if you're not allowed to share any information. 
and uh, you know let them know that you will still be in touch and that you know offer any help to them uh, so that uh, they can uh, you know in future become a better fit so um, i know that our, uh, you know in many cases our hands are tied and uh, it's difficult to uh, you know satisfy candidates uh, when especially your hands are tied with compliance but again transparency wins uh, letting them know clearly that hey i cannot share that information with you but uh, here's here's how we can help you or uh, you know feel free to stay in touch and uh, you know let's chat again in 6 months so these go a long way um, uh, with respect to transparency and communicating clearly right another question is how do you handle candidates or how do you recommend that we handle candidates that do not show up for an interview uh, should we call them should we send follow up email great uh, that's a great question um i think it all depends on um uh you know how how desperately you want to recruit for that role but uh, at the same time um, i i truly believe that if a candidate doesn't show up it means that they're not vested or interested enough unless you know i uh, make a sincere effort to find out why they did not attend so find out why they did not attend um, you know follow up by email or text them or call them and um, uh, if it's a, you know there could be any number of reasons emergencies that candidates could come up with uh, give them the benefit of doubt and despite that uh, you know if the reason is not uh, convincing enough then i would say move on because uh, it's most likely not a good fit uh, because the candidate didn't think enough didn't think your time was important or your company's time was important enough to take that seriously um so yeah do not pursue do not continue to follow up if they're not interested uh, you can definitely move on and use your time to find better candidates right uh so back to the slide on culture there's a question around what exactly is and what exactly is not a culture fit they're looking to get your view on what you believe what is and what is not a culture fit definitely a uh, one very simple way to look at this is uh, figure out your company values uh, and i'm sure everyone knows their own company values uh, also make an effort to find out what the hiring manager and their team values so this um, would be uh, you know the core infrastructure of the culture that you know you, what you need within a candidate and um, um, try and evaluate the candidate uh, in you know in those lines depending on where they've been what's important to them um, what would they like to see or work on in in your current company um, it's it's important to be you know to definitely uh, you know be open uh, and not be too rigid and this is totally you know uh, it depends on person to person this is something we believe in because every new hire that comes on board brings their own part of the culture to the company um and i think it's important to hear that out as well and this increases diversity as well but yeah you can get the basic framework from your company values as well as the hiring manager and team values um and uh, the willingness to be flexible without compromising uh is what makes them valuable as pro professionals as well so this is something you can look for in your candidates okay now in terms of bias what what type of bias do you see uh, as the, the the most prevalent uh, amongst the recruiters that that you work with, there are many kinds of biases, uh, Ryan, that we see. Um, of course, uh, you know some of the most important ones are, uh, you know, uh, uh, it could be certain demographics, certain you know uh, gender bias. Gender bias is something that we see uh, quite a lot. Um, then uh, the next one would be demographics. The you know further down the line would be definitely groups of individuals or individuals that recruiters would know or build relationships with so it's important to hear, be mindful of it and uh, uh, you know um, and definitely conduct the process with fairness um, and uh, yeah uh, there are a number of tools that you could use in this day and age as well in order to avoid that bias um, uh, ai is really really good at this point of time provided it's not trained on the same bias data points uh, ai in this day and age is really good to avoid some of that bias uh, yeah and at the same time you can track your goals with respect to diversity uh, uh, you know as you hire in order to check
whether you know what decisions are being influenced by bias or where bias uh, you know seems like it has shown up so that you can work on uh, you know setting up best practices for that right i think we can end on this one because we're coming up to the hour as far as candidate experience in general do you see any generational differences in expectations on the from the candidates that's a great question uh, yeah i think uh, not only generational differences i think um, uh, you know there are many other kinds of differences uh, with respect to even you know industries um, so uh, generational differences uh, of course millennials right now uh, you know, uh, expect to communicate uh, over text messages or chatbots instant information they prefer uh, you know uh, messaging over any kind of a phone conversation so this again is large amounts of data uh, based on that each and every individual is of course uh, different so millennials are used to instant gratification so speed and communication are super important um, younger candidates are also more focused on what the company can offer them so um, i have a few stats here 64% of millennials would rather make uh, 40k a year at a job they love than 100k a year at a job they think is boring and nearly 80% of millennials look at people and culture fit with prospective employers followed by career potential and this is from glassdoor so uh, definitely generationally and then to allude to the industry uh, yeah technology uh, you know we see uh, candidates are much more pro, uh, much more uh, receptive to messaging as opposed to phone conversation and would likely not get on the phone until they are really sure they want to pursue that opportunity so these are just some uh, you know quick stats that i've been able to pull all right well deepthi this has been fantastic thank you so much for uh, for working with us today and sharing all of this uh, great information uh, for everybody on the call, check your email in a little bit. We will be sending the follow-up, the recording, the slides. We'll have a, a link in there to uh, check out, a, I believe, a calculator, uh, a ROI calculator, or some other good stuff from my ally. And we've got some other uh, good things coming up this week, so keep an eye out for that as well. Uh, and that's it. So thank you all for coming out today, and we will see you on the next webinar. Have a great day.